Bears, 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 Welcome to Bears Country Podcast, the fucking roadshow edition. I'm trying something new right now. Nomad is not with me. I'm flying solo here. I just found out that Ted fucking Phillips, sweaty Teddy, is finally retiring after the end of this season. And I just said to Kitty, fuck it, I don't care. I'm driving. It's no different than talking on the phone or talking to someone who's sitting in the seat next to me, which Kitty is not. So I'm here by myself, and uh, we're going to try something new right now. Driving to Illinois right now, getting ready to go to the Niners game next weekend, and I hear this noise, this news about Ted Phillips retiring, and I did not want to wait until I got to my destination because by the time I get unpacked and everything, it just might've been too late. So I figured, fuck it, let's just do this live right now and see what happens. So we, we all know who Ted Phillips is. If you're a Bears fan with a head on your shoulders, you know who Ted Phillips is. We've all been talking for years about What the fuck is Ted Phillips doing as the team president? He's a glorified accountant. I will say one thing that's curious about this. Ted Phillips, in my mind, was going to be leading the, I mean, I believe even uh, George himself said it. Ted Phillips is going to be leading the charge for the new stadium. So I'm, it's kind of curious to me why he would retire after the end of this season now when, this, when the, the, the new stadium is not even close to getting started to being built. So, hmm, did something happen in the front office? Did, our, did, did Ryan Poles decide? Did, did, did he have some, like, some flex in this? Is, is, do the McCaskies trust Ryan Poles that much that maybe he had something to do with this? I don't know. Probably not. Did Ted Phillips really just want to retire because he wants to retire? That seems kind of silly to me. Ted Phillips, Ted Phillips has been hanging around like a, a fucking bunion on your foot that you can't get rid of. And it makes it hard to walk. So I'm very curious to see what happens, what the outcome of, of this at the end of the season is. And I know, you know, they're going to lie about it. There's going to be some, some other reason. Because if you're retiring now, I wish you would have retired a long fucking time ago because it seemed to me that we would need you now for the new stadium stuff, but oh, well, good riddance to you. Uh, If when he does leave, that begs the question of who is going to replace him. And what I'd like to see is uh, what's what you guys think in the comments here after this video. It's not going to be a very long one. Obviously, I am driving. I have no one to talk to but myself. I'm hoping that you're listening to this. And I do have to pay attention to the road, which I'm doing perfectly fine. But I'm also following a GPS. So we'll keep this as short as we possibly can. I'd like to know what you guys think in the comments, who you think is going to be replacing him. Is it going to be uh, somebody in, in house? Is it going to be someone who perhaps George McCaskey of the McCaskey family has reached out to when they were trying to hire Poles and Cunningham? Is it like a possible Trace Armstrong? Uh Trying to list, I'm trying to think of other names of other candidates that are not inside the building. And the first one that I can come up with is Trace Armstrong, but he does have a pretty successful business as a, uh, I think he runs his own uh, agent firm, which I think he makes probably a lot more money doing that than he would be as the Bears president. So he's probably not a candidate for this. 
my personal view on this, who I think that they're probably eyeballing is Cliff Stein. But my buddy, Steve Sigmund, who was on the podcast a couple days ago with Nomad and I said, he doesn't seem to believe that because he has, he's turned down higher roles in the, in the, in the bears before. Um, kind of thinks that he likes the position that he's in currently. He also told me that Olin Krutz said the same thing because I, I find that interesting too. Olin Krutz came out and said, Cliff Stein is his, is his choice. And that's the first thing that I said, Cliff Stein. Fuck, let's go, let's go hire Greg Gabriel. Let's bring Greg into the Bears again. Of course, if we did that, myself wouldn't be able to have a, exclusive interview myself and nomad an, an exclusive interview with greg gabriel uh, as we currently have with the association with byron network now so i guess i kind of hope he doesn't become the team president and for my own selfish reasons uh i'm trying to think of anybody else that i could think of inside the building i can't really think of anybody um so hopefully, and you know, hopefully this doesn't turn into like some fucking exhaustive search where they have to hire a goddamn firm to come in and help them figure out, you know, who the next president of the company will be because that'll be a goddamn embarrassing, won't it? I can't see what that said because I'm driving, but Kitty, can you read that to me? Uh, tip, tip, Ted should should take George with him too. Also said, Ted overstayed his welcome. Yes. He's like a goddamn bunion on the bottom of your foot. It's been there for years. You keep getting it removed, but it keeps coming back. Well, that would actually be an oversight because if he got it removed, then they have even tried to remove him. So uh, the fact that he's been around this long is just a fucking joke. So good riddance. Good riddance. And hopefully they bring in a football guy next because what this team needs is a football guy and a goddamn accountant as the team president. It's time for a fucking football guy. Is this team actually, are they, are they starting to fall into the category of for real? And they, it seems like they finally got it right with polls. Polls goes out and gets an assistant general manager that you see him both sit at the podium and, and talk, uh, about the process. And that's the first time I've ever seen that. And in my 37 years of Bears fandom, so that was refreshing. And then you see him, they bring in a, in my opinion, an excellent, excellent head coach who's a teacher and finds like-minded coaches beneath him who are teachers. And I've said it before, it's like the blind squirrel finally got the nut. So shit it, it, if if ted phillips actually gets replaced with a football guy let's just say it was traced armstrong that'd be pretty fucking cool man trace armstrong runs a, a a very good sports agent firm so he has he knows how to run a company and between cliff stein being my first guess because he's on the team currently and they would be promoting from within my guess my my choice for someone on the outside to come in would be someone who is an ex-bear bringing in like a gary fensick or a trace armstrong or someone like that who is an ex-bear who is a uh, who had who ran a successful business after he retired uh, again, just going to keep this short. I want to thank all of you for listening. Let me know in the comments below who you think. I'd like to know who you think they're going to hire. And then I'd like to know who you would like them to hire. Because I'm, like, I'm, I'm curious to know what other Bears fans think. I appreciate you all being here with me right now on the road. Cannot wait to go home for the Bears game. Got a lot of fucking awesome stuff planned for that day. In fact, a 49ers fan reached out today about 
having, uh, I'm not sure if it's having him on our pod or vice versa, um, but about doing a, a show for that game uh, the week of or possibly the day of. That might be a little hard with all the stuff that I've got going on on that day and Kitty does and Nomad does. Um, with myself being at the game, of course, it's going to be uh, pretty crazy. So hopefully we can squeeze that in if it has to be Sunday. But if it's not, it'll be awesome to do it at some point later in the week. So we'll be, we'll be doing like a breakdown with uh, another 49ers podcast. Uh, excuse me now for not remembering the exact name. It's, I think it's called Celts. Celts communications or Celts, I don't know, it's Celts something. I'll put that later on when I get home. I'll put that in the uh, in the description, and um, you guys can tune in for that because that's going to be fun. I, I that was one of the ideas we had was trying to do um, podcasts with the opposing teams podcasters, but I reached out to the NFC North opponents, and so far I've only gotten the Vikings. So I thought it'd be probably a little bit difficult to reach out to that vast of an audience trying to find podcasters for each other team we play. But this is great that he came to me. His name is Rich Kelts, and I apologize, Rich, if you're watching this, that I, I didn't remember uh, the name of your podcast. Um, but I will I will link that in the description later on uh, when I get home. Or maybe I'll have Kitty do it when she's done. But uh, thanks for, for, for tuning in here, man. I hope you guys are all as excited as I am about Ted Phillips fucking the fuck off. Get out of here, Ted. Get out of here, sweaty Teddy. Go play with your, your Star Wars toys and whatever else it is that you do when you're not running the bears correctly. Uh, so thank you very much for, thank you everyone out there very much for tuning into this wild and crazy fucking road show episode of bears country podcast. If you like this content, man, please subscribe, set your notifications because I promise you, I mean, I promise you, we are not going to let you down. Bears. Bears, 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 bears,